Today, we have Purdue University doing a test for a lunar lander leg. Biggest challenges, you know, getting a rocket lit and providing that heat source and turning it around in just a few minutes while they reset their experiments and lighting the rocket engine again, and then turning it, lighting again and again. So we'll actually do four rocket engine firings in one day. We're testing the heat transfer in the legs of a simulated lunar lander, um, that would, the heat that would come off the exhaust of a rocket. Everybody wants to be in aerospace. So we have 1,200 undergrads at Purdue in aerospace engineering, 600 grad students. More and more want to come in. To actually create a design and then order the materials and then get the materials and drill the holes and put it together has been just really, really exciting for me to see my design come to fruition. Here we are coming out, providing services for universities, for NASA, and it allows us to also get multiple repetitions on this hardware. We test it like no one else does. Right now we spend millions of dollars on lunar landers. We use exotic materials, so we know they won't break. We know that they can handle everything. But what if they didn't have to be million dollar landers, they could be hundred thousand dollar landers because we could use less exotic materials. That's what they're trying to prove today. And they're using our rocket plume as the heat source to say, hey, maybe we can use aluminum. They've invited University of Central Florida out to do one of their experiments. And this one's really neat. They've got eight lasers mounted on the side of our rocket looking down to actually measure particle sizes as the simulated regolith is flying away from the rocket plume and the exhaust. 